Why do so many businesses fail in the Philippines? Um, the fact is, from an expat's perspective, a lot of the guys have never done business before, or, or women. And the reason I say women as well is the fact is a lot of guys will buy businesses for their Filipino partner in the hope that it will actually help them and their family progress. Reality is, business, no matter where it is in the world, is not easy to do. Um, the Philippines is harder um, because of understanding the local cultural issues, the local business issues, uh, supply and demand, all, all sorts of compli complicated things. Um, but some of the major issues uh, was brought up by Chris Bennett in a previous video I did. Uh, first one he brought up was they can do it better than the locals. This is very common. The fact is the locals know how to run most things. Um, there's always a reason things are done a certain way. And they may not be logical to yourself. But the reality is it's always been like that. Um, I remember somebody on about rice um, and processing the rice themselves. I said, oh, we'll just buy this. And his partner turned around and said to him and says, we buy that the the people that own the the uh the one where everyone gets their process at the moment will kill them um you can't change it you know the local mayor is processing that because they make a fortune off it the country has corruption issues major ones and assuming because you're morally right that you can just change it ain't going to make a bit of difference if anything you like to get yourself killed it's been done that way because that's the way it's always been. Even with farming, I know Filipino farmers, uh, which know their stuff, the, the university graduates, they've studied farming, whatever, got land, gone back to train their farmers how to process things, why it's done this way, da da da, giving them modern techniques. And as soon as they leave, the farmers go back to the way they've always done it for the last 60, 80 years just because the uh difficult i'll try not to be try not to swear there but that's the sort of stuff you're dealing with that's why a lot of this stuff is not so obvious you might assume you're smarter than the average filipino they've they've survived with hardships this is the bit people forget um i remember talking to my wife's uncle about when i was at school i i used to uh skip the bus and walk to school then use the money to buy computer magazines um because i didn't get a pocket money or allowance so i used to do that and i would skip lunch every other day that sort of thing he said if he did that he would be passing out because they didn't have enough uh there was no excess to start with um and that's a guy that is a multimillionaire in the philippines so the fact is they understand the environment more than you do. They understand that there's a lot of stupid things that go on, but they also understand it's near impossible to change a lot of it. But they understand their own market. Doesn't mean that it's impossible, but the first thing is you have to respect what's already there before you can progress things fur further. Um, the other the strangest one I find is people assuming that because a business is cheap to start, um, it's worth doing. The reason it's cheap to start is the profits are cheap. You're not going to make big money. Um, but for me, this is where my business model comes from. It's not from having one uh, big business or um, one small business. It's having multiple um, like the peso peso machines, There's, they run themselves, get five or six of them running, that's your rent paid for the month. Get the sorry sorry store when you're sat at home in the evening, you're selling beer out of the window or whatever, you're getting paid for um, sticking stuff out the window. You're there anyway, but the, the fact is you're not wasting any money or your time, there's money being generated constantly. This is how Filipinos look 
uh, things. There's money in everything. But a lot of them is how you tie things together. Um, the other thing Chris brought up was the laws. The laws are quite strict in the Philippines, especially for foreigners. If there's opportunity there, you can get a, a hammering uh, by the local mayor, local police, local government, whoever feels like you're easy to exploit. If you work within the law, they can still be very difficult. There's a computer company I know in uh, Makati, very large company, uh, high turnover. Uh, it's owned by a Korean, and he does everything by the book. He has um, some officials turn up to audit his equipment to say, um, we're not sure if all these imports are legal and all the tax are paid. And they spent two hours for the first item and would continue to keep his business closed um, until they basically got a bribe. Um, now you might think that, well, you just pay bribes, it's, you know, you're part of this problem. Um, but in that situation, what do you do? These are the people that control the customs and immigrations. These are the people that should be the people that you rely on for protection. But here they are, wanting quarter million pesos. What do you do? That isn't in a Western uh, business plan, um, but it is culturally known in the Middle East, in Asia, in Africa, it is normal. Corruption is rife. Um, and you may rely on these people for other people that are a bigger problem. So those sort of things happen all the time. Now, the other one Chris brought up, point number five, um, about the elitism. In the Philippines, all the big businesses are owned by the elitist families. I don't like the word elite because that defines somebody of worth. Um, I don't value these people because of their corrupt practices. Um, so I can't use the word elite. What I'll call is the ruling families because they do rule over it when they control the entire economy, tied in with the religion. They're ruling. Um, it's not a class, because class defines something of respect, but I have no respect for it. Because it's not, it's nobody's, it's self-benefit. It's nothing more than that. Um, this means that all the big businesses and the good opportunities are already controlled by a monopoly of a very few people that control everything from the government to the ports to the religion to even the buildings that you occupy for operating a business. This also means if you actually had something of high value and was progressive, there's a good chance that at some point they will just take it from you. Um, and you, this is where I would say, do your research. Because I could go over this stuff, but I would say, just read up on the internet about these people and what they get up to. It's not hard to find things. Um, but they do some very bad stuff to other people and each other. Um, is that an environment you even want to open a business in is the next question. Uh, next one is point six. Uh, yeah, so just having a quick read. All right, this is uh, about the way people are. Um, Chris on, talks about a person that turned up for an interview, then had to go out and disappeared with. Uh, I actually stole something from him at an interview. Philippines had it happen. I had some egg boxes. Um, I sent somebody into the city with two thousand pesos, not a big amount of money, to buy egg boxes for soundproofing. He disappeared. Never seen him again. Now, why that doesn't even make sense is he already had free accommodation on my site. Um, he was actually put in charge of looking after a house for me. So he was actually able to stay in the house. Uh, it's free internet there. Free food. Also, you know, it's fully inclusive. Um, but also because he worked in the call center, 
he had three and a half thousand pesos due in salary. So this is on the Wednesday, so he stole two thousand pesos, yet he gets paid three and a half on the Friday. And that he still had two days to work. That is the logic. And it doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. Well it's obviously wrong for stealing, but it just doesn't make sense sometimes. People will do some of the most bizarre things. Um I remember a friend of mine talking about some of his staff where they would come to him on a Monday for a loan and he said, but you only got paid on Friday, you know, a month's salary. And I said, yeah, but I haven't got any left. Why have you got none? Because they've given it all to their family. And like I said, why do you give them all your wages? Now you've got nothing for the month. I'm not here to feed you. Um, but culturally, a lot of families take everything that people earn and they just stand there and take it um a friend of mine was talking about the same thing with a charity where these people are seen as virtually nothing by their own parents uh because they're i think they're blind and deaf or either um seen as stupid because of the disability yet somebody set up a business where these people are employed they live they develop um and every month this deaf relatives turn up to take all their wages from them and then leave the kids there. That is stuff that goes on. And sometimes the harsh reality is there is some really bad people out there because they don't even see it as wrong. They just see it as, well, that's just the way it is, tough. I can go to church. I can, go, you know, if I create a sin, I go to church and I'm fine again. Well, welcome Christianity. I don't know. I'm not even getting onto that subject, but... That's how a clear conscience comes about. Uh, pride is a major issue. Uh, nobody else actually say they don't know how to do something. They they may not they may say it, but not to you. So if you ask somebody, can you do this? They'll go yeah, and then they'll sit there for half an hour, and then they're asking the people in the room, does anybody else know how to do it? Same as if you reprimand somebody. A lot of time they don't like it. They don't like being told that they don't know what they're doing or whatever. Yet you're actually trying to prize out of them the ability to say, I don't know, can you show me? That is a major problem. Um, you can't really get around it. It's just the way it is in the culture. What you have to do is, the way I do it is my wife deals with most of the uh, staffing issues because I'll sit and say, I've got this problem with X, Y, Z. And then April will deal with them herself in Filipino to Filipino, where they do it in a lighter way, where uh, in the West, we often have a more uh, direct approach. But the next thing is, well, the last point Chris was making was about the corruption. I've already touched on that. The corruption is the biggest problem in the Philippines. It doesn't matter how you look at it, where it fits in. It's in everything from limited stocks and supplies because they can't get through the ports to, to artificially inflate the prices to um, people harassing you for uh, extra money, you know, protection rackets. Didn't really have that problem myself, but I know of other people that have. Um, and some of the two people targeting your business over locals because, um, if you take an internet cafe, for example, um, somebody sets up an internet cafe, they're a foreigner, but the, the business they're competing with that, that, that was already there is a relation of the mayor. The next thing is you'll get raided for. Are your computers Microsoft approved and and licensed? Have you got a mayor's permit? Have you got a sanitary permit? Have you got a fire permit? You can see what happens. Now, bear in mind, this is all process you normally do anyway, but they will keep uh, pressure on you because they'll go, right, you're closed down till you get it. At the same time, they may not, may not issue you for a month because they've done it on purpose. They'll just say, well, you have to get onto the next cycle of um, permit processing. Now, the same same place I could go in um, today and ask for a permit, but I'm doing something else. 
I could get it this afternoon. I've never had any issues with anything. But it's how a lot of this stuff is in Philippine culture. It's a society that is based on relationships. It's networking. But it's good and bad. But anyway, these are the reasons why businesses fail in the Philippines.